There's, see, everybody's got the our reading page for uh, we're going to be we're getting ready for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. I do. I'm always freezing. <laughs> it feels cold after. It's nice in here. I just walked, and it, well, of course, I got warm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> after, well, it seemed like a kind of a long time of high 90s and hundreds, and oh, yeah. I know it. It's hard to get used to it. At least back when I went home, it was it was in Wisconsin. It was in the 70s, but it was humid, so it felt oh, yeah. worse. <laughs> it was wet. <laughs> <laughs> but my brother said that compared to Jap where he was in Japan, it felt dry. So, <laughs> it's like, oh, must be really, I didn't know it was humid in Japan. On the far south end, it's yeah, almost tropical or wow. base is tropical. So, yeah, Japan's really long and stretched out those islands. So, either got you know, snow and ski hills up on the north, on the north islands, and and uh and tropical down in the south where he was at so um but uh so our intro it is uh verses taken from psalm 119 so your testimonies are righteous forever give me the understanding that i may live righteous are you o lord and right are your just decrees you have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in and all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried and, and your servant loves it. Your righteousness is righteous forever and, and your law is true. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. We pray. O Lord, keep your church in your perpetual mercy, and because without you we cannot but fall, preserve us from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, uh, we're we'll start with our gospel lesson, Luke 16, 1 through 15. Uh, so, Luke 16. So we skipped over the prodigal son this year. Other years we we read it. Um, uh, this is called the parable of the dishonest manager, and it's a bit of a difficult one. So uh, what I have is a is a video of a of a theologian, uh, a Lutheran pastor. Uh, uh, Mr. Chad Bird, I'm going to put the link here. We won't. I won't have the video. My Bible study video. If you want to watch it at home, you can go watch his directly. But uh, I'm going to play it here uh, to kind of go through Thank our you. gospel lesson and uh, um, and uh, see what he said. He says it's one of the most difficult parables to. Uh, to understand, um, I can turn it this way. Oh, Oops. So. Okay, I can see if that helps. Okay. Okay. I would need a little more volume. Welcome to this week's episode of Reading the Gospels. So, does that make sense? No. No? <laughs> He's definitely a pastor. Yeah, He's definitely. He's not quite bringing it down to, to our level. Well, besides that, I couldn't 
understeer a lot of it. Oh, I'm sorry. But and I was following here is too, and so I'm sorry. But I thought he was reducing these amounts because he had been on overcharging people and he was trying to get it down to where it was supposed to be so that his master would wouldn't not. know he had been skimming and cheating his people. Mm -hmm. That's where I went with it right off the bat. But Yeah, yeah but after that, what do you... Yeah. yeah. But I was trying to get further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause it's, it is a, it's a difficult thing, right? If, you know, if, yeah, how was he mismanaging yeah. the, the accounts? Uh, yeah, you don't. It doesn't say. It doesn't say exactly. No. Um, now he's studying Hebrew quite a bit. So he's, from a Hebrew perspective, he's trying to help us see it from, you know, with the way Jesus was talking and the way people who was, who were listening to Jesus how they would have been thinking, you know, because right, because we think of it from a from an American perspective today. And what would you do with the businessman, with the manager who went around and started reducing the accounts? You know, <laughs> you would you would you would go back and say, no, 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 that's not that's not true. He didn't have the authority to do that, right? You know. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, you're only making it worse, right? Uh, by by being dishonest about uh, changing these accounts. Yeah, and it, and it, it didn't give a, a lot of finished things, so it leaves you up yeah. in the air. Yeah, yeah, and and, the and worst part is I could, I didn't I my ears aren't very good. I couldn't hear a lot of it. I'm sorry. I was trying to. I know, and I don't know what you could do because. Turn it up a little louder. More no, I don't think that would have helped. Okay. <laughs> um, but um, shrewd use of our possessions, huh? Uh, yes. Uh, our possessions, not others. Right. <laughs> right. Not, uh, yeah, God loves a cheerful giver when we give voluntarily, not when it's mandated through taxes and uh and other things you know the, the government takes it away and, and gives it away for you that's you know that's not a cheerful giving yeah, <laughs> well, i like to uh, yeah. you also so give unto caesar what is caesar's mm -hmm. you give unto god what yeah is god. Mm -hmm. because it says you cannot so serve god pay and taxes and is not money. being dishonest no honest. no now, whether whether it's the government's responsibility to do all the charity work, that's that's another discussion. But when you when you make yeah. the check out for the IRS, you're not you right. You don't get to say what they're doing. Right. You're paying your debt. Right. And then the legislature is where the the debate about how much should yeah. go to where should is supposed to happen, but uh, but um, right. Not not when you write the check. Well, I disagree with half what the government's spending money on, so I'm only going to send half my taxes. Yeah. yeah. Um. Welcome to uh, cell number uh, whatever. <laughs> You're in jail now. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Um, and ultimately, our possessions don't come from the government either, right? They come from God. They come from God. So... As an individual, as a church congregation, as a denomination, we should be using what we have for God's honor and glory. Um, you know, um, yeah, to, for the good of others as well as us. Yeah, and in some ways the church, I mean, it does have accounts and it does keep track of accounts like a business, but we're not a business either. You know, we don't have to, we shouldn't be as worried about being efficient with our money in the same way that a business is. We're in the business of saving souls. Saving souls, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, giving it away, uh, but, but being shrewd about that, wise about that, not just handing it out to people who are, you know, to buy drugs on the streets but helping them 
to get you know food and things they need but uh, um, yeah being wise shrewd and how we as a church use it too but not penny pinching not building up our accounts uh, oh look our church is so rich um, uh, we are rich mm -hmm. you know you can't buy what we have right um, and now and also he said he said this was his interpretation mm -hmm. and there are many other common Taters, you know, scholars who take a slightly sure. different understanding of it. I think he was talking up here. Yeah. Well, that's what We're I We're down said. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, th this is, for me, I had to watch it again because I, I was uh, having trouble understanding the, you know, this parable, what it was. Uh, just reading it, I understand it better, reading it right out of the Bible. <laughs> that's here. what I thought yeah. I okay. what he was telling us. Okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah. So... Um, I just, but sometimes I enjoy his perspectives, or at oh, least it yes. helps me, yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. Um, so where is this man from? He's, is he in, the, in our synod or what? Yeah, he's in our synod. He's, uh, he's, uh, he writes, he's a, he's a scholar. Uh, I don't know exactly all of his story and how he ended up where he's at, but he's, he's a scholar. But he, he has a day job of, of driving truck in the, oh, so for the not, oil fields. He's not a pastor. <laughs> um, he's been a professor. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, obviously very learned. Uh, and, and so he's got, this is a, his side job is doing this. I don't, I don't know exactly why he's not at the seminary or is a pastor or things. Like, um, but, uh, yeah. Well, you know what the definition of an expert is? Yeah. Somebody that's 50 miles from home. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody that what? 50 miles from home. Oh. <laughs> yes. Is that, is that 50 miles from heaven? Because heaven is our home. <laughs> yeah, oftentimes somebody can sound you know, more like an expert a little further away where people don't know them as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, was there anything else that you understood it, from reading through it? Then, well, I, you know, as I read through it and, and looked at the commentary from the the Lutheran Study Bible, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't uh, gather any sense out of what he was saying. Okay. Well, I would like to hear what said in, in, huh? in the commentary. Uh, <laughs> is there anything in particular? Yeah. Uh, that we can use um, maybe the, the summary of, of this of verses 1 through 6 of 13 with that uh, says because he went back and forth and it was hard to follow mm -hmm. um, this is guard against becoming enslaved to the pursuit of wealth instead use money for godly and eternal purposes God offers us lasting treasure in Christ and so a true perspective on money and goods. Is that... Uh, it has to do with money, you call it, right? Mm-hmm. It's right when he says you cannot serve God and money. Mm-hmm. You know, the world is so different now than it was when we were young, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Money and money. Yeah. Management. Money is the God now. And money that's God and that you should have God. Well... There were always the Rockefellers and the, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there were always people who money was their God. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's always been people who had a lot of money, uh, but in some ways, because m more people, there's more people in the middle class, more people with money now, more people uh, who used to work and trust in the Lord day to day and things, now we trust in our retirement accounts, in our bank accounts, in our savings, or our, or our, or our garage full of, full of toys, or whatever it is that or are You look at, uh, as you, going into Spokane is a great example. What's the first thing you see once you get by the parish A storage. Storage units. Well, we got quite a few right here in yeah. town. And then we're getting another one. Yeah. Down there, uh, Jess Ford is putting in uh, storage units. 
storage units where they used to park their vehicles. Really? And that's what? What do we need storage units? Because we got too much stuff. Yeah. And, the, and what you pay for them is more than they're worth. Right. Right. That's the sad part. This. Right. If you if you. Waited. If you thought about it for a few minutes and added it up over a few, over a year or two years, what you're paying for the storage is more than what the stuff is worth. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it, that's certainly often true because we, it, the American Legion, has been call, invited out to help clean up storage units, and and oftentimes are just so full of junk. Junk. Well, I've, I've been, do they have sales in the American Legion? Do they have sales? You're right. Yeah, we had sales all all uh, summer. summer. Yeah. Good, Goodwill in Spokane used to have these bins at various locations. To gather stuff. And they finally have gotten away from that because they ended up being garbage dumps. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, then they were responsible for yeah, getting rid of the junk. Yeah. Right. Right. Goodwill. And whenever there's one of those uh, charities, like we, the fires that we've had in our area, and car loads of and truck loads of stuff go there, yeah, that's mismatched sad. shoes and broken sad. everything, sad. yeah, dirty yeah. laundry, yeah, just you know, just um, yeah, you may, yeah, your heart's not quite in the right place when you're sending dirty laundry and. Broken shoes, yeah. Oh, just at the senior center. Yeah. My daughter-in-law said about a third goes in the junk, and about a third goes with goodwill, and about a third is what they put up. They get so much stuff. Yeah. But a third of it being... Well, you go by the senior center right now, and there's must be 20 bags of stuff sitting out in front of the thrift store. And they're not supposed to do that. They're supposed to bring it. Oh, it's been, the point I'm making is... is Probably junk. Yeah. That somebody dropped off. They there. don't want to know, know who brought it. Yeah. 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 You never put a return address on it. <laughs> no. Return to sender. <laughs> yeah, right. Or it becomes a problem for all of these thrift stores and things. Yeah. So much uh, yes. junk. And yet, and yet they ha are filled with good stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that. That often sits on the shelf for the month or whatever, and then <laughs> they still have to get rid of. Yeah, we have so much more stuff it's a lot of work. than it, than any of us can more what much more than we need. You know, when I moved here, I was going to the community church with my sister, and they have a basement full of stuff. They have yard sale every fall, I think. So I got rid of all my stuff there, you know. And I had my wedding dress from 1953. Beautiful heavy satin with some lace on it and a long train, and it was in really good shape. And my sister said that a gal took it over to uh, Cashmere, and she's got it on a on a dummy. <laughs> in one in her, uh, she, I, she has a, some kind of a store over there. Rather than try to sell it in a sale, I don't think anybody's going to want it because the girls don't dress like that for a wedding anymore. But mm -hmm. anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. My dress is not Gadmer on a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> there was a beautiful one at the Catholic yard sale was this there? past weekend. A I mean, wedding dress? A wet, white, long wedding dress with the train and the, the veil that was huge and heavy. Was it a heavy satin? It was a satin? Yes. Yeah. And beaded. Oh, it, was, it was just beautiful. Did they, when if they sold it? I don't know. I don't think they're having weddings like that anymore. Do you? What? I don't think they're having weddings like that. Well, some people do. Oh, yes, they're still having Spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on a wedding. Yeah. But, uh, but right, there's a lot of people who get mar get married in shorts and swimsuits and yeah. You know. <laughs> hey, and and, and there's yeah, there's like there's a balance. It's like we don't have to we don't have to go into debt for a wedding. But we could still put some effort into making it a special day, you know, and not, you know, <laughs> I mean, there's a balance between the two extremes, yeah. Uh, so. Well, a lot of weddings, that, those big weddings are nothing more than a display of wealth of the parents. Yeah, 
and the, that whole you should spend three months salary on the on the ring you know on the engagement ring and you know all of this is all just to benefit yeah the the people who sell the the rings and the dresses and I've yeah. got Linda's ring out of the Cracker Jack box yeah that's a good place to get is that why you're glad yeah, it only cost me a nickel <laughs> yeah. back then it costs more than that now <laughs> Uh, let's look at a the Old Testament, Amos chapter eight. We got a couple of minutes. Let's see what he says. Amos is in in the towards the end of the Old Testament. So after Isaiah, Jeremiah, after I Jeremiah. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. Page 977. 977, isn't it? Chapter 8, is that what you said? Yeah, 977, yeah, 977. Uh, for, uh, for our Pew Bible. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're in the right place. He was famous for his cookies. Chapter 8, verses 4 through 7. Right? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, probably a different Amos. Amos and Andy. <laughs> yeah, famous Amos cookies. Are they, those, are they still around? Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't get them, so I don't know. Is there a bakery in town? Yeah, in the grocery stores. Oh, okay. So there's no, just no regular bakery. Uh, okay, verses four. Um, um, let's see, how should we read this? Um, Marilyn, you want to read the first verse? Verse four. Oh, we're going to start with four? Yeah. Hear this, you who trample on the needy, and bring the poor of the land to an end. Okay, so. Um, I thought they said that the poor will always be with us. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the truth. There has to be a bottom and a top. Yeah. Although Jesus did also do, you know, gave food away and you know, healed and you did a lot for the poor. But he, yes, yes. but yeah, but the, but the poor, no matter how much you give away, uh, there will, there must always be poor. Yeah. So our, our, the gospel is not about saving everybody from from poverty yeah, i mean <laughs> uh, it we, if we can do that we we should try to help people who are in need but but it's not you never really hear of a poor christian though do you i don't think i've ever known what i would call a poor christian because well, christian cause person a person's a believer you you mean in a financial way or or in a well, spiritual well, yeah, way any like what they what they think is poor nowadays oh you know? or even when we were young yeah but but they weren't poor so that they didn't have shelter or clothes or food i never knew anybody like they're that. not poor in their heart no but they have a hard time making it from one month to the next month it's a struggle constantly yeah, yeah. and that that's hard on your spirit you mm -hmm. yeah. yeah there are christians who well, and then you can Get so many people that have been evicted from their uh, yeah. premises mm -hmm. because of the greed of, of yeah. the upper class and raising the rents. Mm -hmm. Even though their costs haven't gone up, but it's now a good time to raise your rent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah well, it's I been a do crazy better. real yeah, estate I market. Do better than that. Yeah. Um, all right. Verse uh, verse five is kind of long. But uh, Betty, read. saying, when will the new moon be over, that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the ephah small and the shikel great, and deal deceitfully with false balances. Okay. Okay. It sounds like there's some greed going on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because you know, us, particularly in Israel, in in the 
in God, the Holy Land, they weren't supposed to have normal business you know, on a Sabbath day, the whole day from sunset Friday night to sunset Saturday. Yeah. Um, uh, you couldn't if you forgot. You couldn't stop and get donuts on the way to the on the way to the synagogue. Uh, you, you, if you forgot something, you uh, had to make do with what you had until till sunset. Um, and the new moon festivals would or moon new, every month there was a special feast. Or fe, you know, and uh, some people didn't want to stop what they were doing. They wanted to just keep doing business and make more money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we see that today. There's people who work even on Christmas Day or well, Thanksgiving. You know, oh, I get overtime. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I remember when the stores had to be closed on Sunday. Mm -hmm. and so do I. I. I thought it was all. How well, nice that would be. <laughs> I always thought it was a good thing. I know. I, I don't know why they quit doing it. Well, you it. used to have blue laws. Yeah, that's what it right. was. Right. At least blue noon laws. on Sunday or something, right? Or... I remember when I was managing uh, Rosars at 14th and Lincoln, we couldn't sell alcohol on Sunday. Mm hmm. Oh, now you can see. And then they broke that and said you can sell it after two o'clock on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That gave everybody a time to go to church in the morning and then they could come to the store and buy booze. To the to their other church. <laughs> Which could do it before two o'clock. And it was amazing how many people would be lined up at one thirty waiting to buy booze. Was that yeah. in Spokane where you worked? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh that was a pretty good store, wasn't it? Those are fourteen. Well, I mean, yeah, are they still there? Three different stores up there. Uh, is Rosar still around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Safeway. <laughs> I I heard of someone who was working at one of the convenience mart, and what is the rule? You can't sell before six o'clock in the morning or something. Uh, well, I think it's. Uh, I I don't know about the beginning. You can't sell it after two o'clock. I know that. There's certain two hours. Two a.m. Two a.m. to six a.m. or something. Window in there between. Yeah. Or, and she said, "There's people." Try to come to the convenience store, you know, five, you know, in the morning or so. And then they just sit outside and wait till six a.m. till they can. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Yes, but uh, but um, the uh, but the 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 ad. It's about the attitude. Not in not in. And now, if somebody really is in need, we should. You know, give them, you know, take care of them, even on a Sabbath day. Give them some food. Jesus did that, uh, but uh, but uh, Jesus did healing on a Sabbath day. But but uh, the attitude here is not about helping other people. It's about making money. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. me me me. Um, verse six, Linda, you you want to read Amos verse six? That we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. And sell the chaff of the wheat. Okay. By the poor. So slavery. Um, put them in debt, and then make them go to work for you to pay it off. And always, you. Uh, the, yeah, that song. Say, uh, load sixteen tons, and what do you get? Another day older and a deeper in debt. Sold my soul to the company store. That reminds me of where I was. That's exactly what the mill that was there that did. They owned the company store, and it was the same. They owned their so My mother-in-law worked at the store, and she says, oh, yes, it was definitely that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so things happen. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's making money hand over fist. Because yeah. They were always indebted to the company store. Yeah. And and it may be not exactly the same, but they you still know, find yeah, ways to do it. Things, yeah. You know, now, I mean, More these factories in, in these other countries, you know, how much are these people getting paid to make the shoes and clothes and things? Oh, well. Very little. Yeah. So we might not see it in our neighborhood, but it's still all around the world. We've just... Um, so a pair of sandals, chaff. So not... Not just selling the actual wheat and, and healthy part of the food, but selling... The chaff of the wheat, now, 
What did they use the chaff of the wheat for? Bulk up the, the good stuff. What? Put it in with the good stuff. Make it heavier. Oh. Make it heavier. <laughs> Charge them the same oh, price. Oh, whole wheat bread, you mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they polluted it. Uh, a couple of rocks in the bottom of the bag. <laughs> now, new price, you know, with 50% less calories. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, well did, did, uh, I think uh, Continental Baking Company uh, years ago got uh, hauled into court over having wood. Yeah? Oh my uh, gosh. Shavings in some of their products. I know. There, yeah, some some is made with cellulose. Some breads are made with filler, wood. Yeah. Pro um, That's funny. All right, verse 7. Then. 7. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Deeds. Huh. Okay. He's not going to forget when they did something against his people. And this note says the pride of Jacob is the land of Israel. It's still part of their pride, isn't it? The, mm -hmm. the, the land of Israel, the nation. Um, so, um, I'm looking for the summary here. Verse 8. This, so we did skip over the kind of the opening of this, but we get the kind of the meaty input part. There's well, that's a, another thing, like the weight of things, they put it down a little bit, sell it for the same price. Right. And you don't realize that a lot of times right away, and it's with a lot of stuff they do that. Yeah, the box is half, some settling may occur, half the box, yeah. 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 Um, well, a half gallon of milk uh, is still a half gallon, but so many of the new Size to 59 ounces. Oh. Uh, they, they look exactly the same. Yeah, Ice yeah. Ice cream isn't two quarts anymore. No, a quart and a half, Ice quart and three quarts. Two quarts. No. That really no. irks me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> three three pound tub of ice cream now is 56 ounces. Or a four pound tub, excuse me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I buy Klondike That's bars. a very discreet way of buying Klondike bars. Bars. Now they do oh, still. You know what they are? Sure. I just list the, you know the exact, but you got to pay attention. Then you got to notice. So and the marketing always says fewer calories, or or they reduce it so much that then they say lower price, but it's really not the same size anymore. Size is smaller. <laughs> well, the beverage companies for years got by with when they had to put the nutritional information on the on the end product. Uh, so many calories. Per eight ounces. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says per bottle. And, and now it has to say per bottle. Right. <laughs> because eight ounces was only this much. Right. <laughs> no, yeah, hardly anybody drank only eight ounces. How many, yeah, how, how many I'm ounces? I'm only taking 120 that? calories 200, for eight ounces. 200 I'm ounces. 600 no. ounces. 20 oh, I mean, ounces. How many ounces? Does it have the ounces on there? 20. No, 16, but 16. it took me two days to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I drank part of it one day and the rest of it the next day. You're trying to save it. Thank huh? God for twist on cat. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't do that with a can. No, it's a little stale on there. Yeah. yeah. You can, yeah, some. So, um, so Amos is talking about the same sorts of greedy uh, attitudes you know, and not you know, using. God's possessions in godly ways. You know, what God, God has blessed the people with in godly ways. Um, so. It's just made it so that it's hard for a lot of people to really realize what they're doing, what's happening. Mm-hmm. I just think, yeah. Even not us old people. Even us old people. <laughs> even the young people, it's hard. Yeah. So. Well, we are about out of time. This has been a good discussion. Good. I'm glad you guys all showed up. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we should be good to keep going for a while. I don't don't have any any planned <laughs> issues, but uh, so Donna, did you see Donna today? 
No, because when I went over there, they were getting ready to move her from her bed to her hospital bed. Okay. The nurse was there, and it was there just too much commotion to stay. Is there a time of day that's good to visit her? Or? Uh, normally, normally 10, 11 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. 10 to Which 11. Donna? Donna, Donna Shear. Oh, Shear, okay. Um, who helped at the yard sales? Okay. A little Donna. Yeah. Okay. She has a one-eyed dog, too, you know. Oh, dear. Opposite eyes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, opposite okay. eyes. So they can help each other. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> but uh, um, otherwise, any other prayers that I did? Keep no emergencies. Oh, your yeah. friend Jennifer and Donna and just keep Brenda. Brenda still. Oh, he's Marilyn's son. Yeah. He is really bad. My sister went to Anachi. She had to go over there for some other business, and she made it a point to go see Nick. And he's in a bed in the living room, and he's got hospice. And she said she thought, because she's the uh, CNA, and she thought he'd had another stroke. He's only like 57. And uh, yeah, he's not doing well. He's just on his last road. But you know, I can't be sad because he's a Christian. So I know where he's going and I know I'll see him again. You know, if he wasn't a Christian, that would be so hard to bear. But you know, he's had a, a good life and he raised uh, his, his kids and his wife in the church. She was nothing when he married her. And, Brought the boys into the church, and now they're in their 30s. So he's, he's had a busy life, always worked. But, you know, it's just one of those things. It's hard to be healthier than your kids. You know, just, I've got one son left. He's he's not really that well either. He's in, he's in Ellensburg. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it was their lifestyle. Their dad taught them how to drink <laughs> when they were quite little. And you know how that goes. Yeah. Yeah, that is, it is rough on a body. You don't sleep as well, you don't... Well, it's just... You don't eat as well. It well, I burns up your insides. Okay, yeah, it's hard on your liver, that, poison. Yeah, no. yeah. But anyway, that's what's... But, you know, the Lord gives you the strength to get through it. You know, mm -hmm. you, there's just no shortcuts. you got to face it. So, but like I said, if he wasn't a Christian, that would really bother me. Mm-hmm. Well, and he's, he goes to Pastor Winterstein's church. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're, they've been members there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Has Pastor Winterstein ever been up here? Uh, probably when we had uh, when we had a pastor's gathering here. Mm -hmm. So I think he'll they'll be coming back. Um, I don't remember. Let's see, we're in Moses Lake. We were at Bethel last. Probably in the next year, they'll be coming up through Grand Coulee again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'll let you know. So have any of the rest of you had any loss in your family like that? I didn't quite Children? Know. Grandchildren or whatever? Just my siblings. Yeah. Well, I'm the oldest of four, so... <laughs> And my sister, who lives here now, she's like, she grew up with my boys, so she's like a year older than my oldest son. So she's kind of like the daughter I never had. She really helps me a lot now. She takes me to the store because I don't drive anymore. And uh, so that's a blessing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they're here. All right, let's pray. Oh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us to uh, have the proper attitude towards our money and treasures and possessions and uh, and uh, to use them wisely to your honor and glory and uh, throw to throw ourselves on your mercy for our uh, for eternal salvation and our life with you and uh, our restoration and and uh, to solve all the all the problems and ills of this world that we live with and we thank you Lord for our loved ones who are with you, and we look forward to seeing them and being with them again. Uh, continue to be with uh, Jennifer and Donna and, and Marilyn's son, and, uh, and with, 
with those who grieve. We pray that they would all have the peace uh, that you get, give through faith and knowing that we will see them again. And pray all these things in Jesus' name and as he taught us. Perfect. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Have you heard anything?